Chantal, I think you're on next and looking forward to hearing about the innovative new directions with physiotherapy. Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here today and to present, to have been invited to contribute to this uh, workshop. Um, uh, I didn't uh, start it. So I will be presenting you a new, a new technique in physical therapy uh, for bladder control. Then I'll be talking to you about longevity of uh, physical therapy treatment effect. And finally, I will take most of the time talking to you about new treatment techniques in physical therapy. So before we go into the evidence, I would like to um, to give you the, the main goals that we use in physical therapy um, to uh, treat bladder control dysfunction. So there's two main goals. The first one is to alter voiding habits to change bladder function. And this is done through bladder training and delayed voiding. And the second one is targeting the pelvic floor muscle to improve strength and control and indir indirectly um, improving bladder control through the increase in strength. And this is done through strategies that involves urethral occlusion and urge suppression. So now for the evidence, uh, probably the most used intervention for uh, bladder control dysfunction is pelvic floor muscle training. And if we look at the literature, uh, we can see that there is at this time level one evidence of that treatment uh, effectiveness to reduce um, urge urinary incontinence and mixed urinary incontinence. So looking at the trials in women, there's four trials on urge and mixed incontinence, and the pelvic floor muscle training is better than a control treatment, but not better than any other interventions such as medication of other conservative management. For men, only one trial uh, comparing, um, and here it's, um, it's not better than the other intervention, which is medication. Now, interestingly, you can see that uh, those uh, pelvic floor muscle training have not, uh, treatment, have not only looked at the effect of incontinence, but also on frequency and nocturia. And in women, there's one trial, uh, and you can see that it's, again, better than control to do pelvic floor muscle uh, training for frequency and nocturia. In men, there's no studies on that, on those outcomes. However, I found one trial that is ongoing looking at pelvic floor muscle training versus drugs. So hopefully in the next years, we're gonna have data on that. Another intervention is pelvic floor with biofeedback. And here again, uh, we can see that uh, those three trials in women and three trials in men seem to show that pelvic floor muscle training is better than control. However, in women, the trials don't seem to agree on the fact that pelvic floor plus biofeedback is better or not than pelvic floor alone. And to answer that question, again, uh, a trial that is ongoing, the OPAL trial, that will be able to answer that question in mixed urinary incontinent women. Now, if we look at electrical stimulation, magnetic stimulation, and transcutaneous tibial nerve stimulation, here, although we have a couple of studies, um, the uh, size of those studies and the quality of those studies doesn't permit us to go to level one evidence of effectiveness. So it is level two evidence, and we will need more trial of uh, great quality ne next year on uh, those treatments. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about the longevity of physical therapy treatment. Most of those studies assess the impact of physical therapy treatment immediately after the intervention. Almost no data are presented in the long term, and this is a major problem. Um, there's one trial, Borrello uh, in 2010, who did a secondary analysis of the BDRI study, and they looked at adherence to physiotherapy for urge urinary incontinence during the supervised uh, intervention and at one year. They found that there was a reduction, an important reduction in adherence, as you can see. 
the most important barriers, according to the participant to the trial, were to remember the exercise and finding time to do the exercise. So I think that a challenge for physiotherapists in the years to come will be to find intervention targeting those barriers in order to promote long-term uh, effectiveness of those treatments. And I think one, maybe one thing that could be helpful for physiotherapists is that five publications on adherence to pelvic floor muscle training and pelvic floor muscle dysfunction have been submitted to uh, neurourology and neurodynamics uh, um, a couple of weeks ago. These are the result of the state of the science seminar on adherence and pelvic floor exercise that was held prior to ICS 2011. So hopefully this will be helpful to physiotherapists. Now let's look at the future. I think that physiotherapists will have to uh, um, consider uh, different things in the future to improve their intervention. And I think one of these is to better understand or better characterize uh, urgency as a sensation. And there's a very nice body of work that was done by Rebecca Das, one uh, physiotherapist that is a member of the ICS, uh, looking at uh, urgency. And she did, uh, the first trial she did was a systematic review looking at uh, tools to measure urgency, and she found that most of the time they were using an unidimensional uh, construct. Then she went on to do uh, interviews with, uh, with people about their sensation of desire to void, and she found that there was a difference, uh, and there was multiple dimension of that feeling, and the difference was between um, patient with overactive bladder and those without overactive bladder. So she developed a questionnaire to evaluate the multidimensional sensory experience of urgency. Um, and within there was suddenness, unpleasantness, and anxiety, and this was presented here uh, this week. And I think this is very important because by understanding better the sensation of urgency, we will be able to better target uh, those components. And maybe one example of that is a study by an occupational therapist, uh, Dr. Baker, in 2012, uh, looking at mindfulness-based stress reduction intervention to treat urge urinary incontinence. Um, so what is mindfulness-based reduction technique? It, they were developed to address the cognitive and somatic dimension of unmanaged stress associated with either chronic pain or chronic illness. In this case, uh, the brain itself learns how to relax and to be more effective in regards to signals of fullness of stress related to urgency. So it was a pilot randomized trial with only 30 subjects. But the intervention, uh, which was uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction, um, was compared to yoga. And the results showed that MBSR group were better at eight weeks, six months, and even at one year. So the implication is that, of course, we're going to need to do a larger randomized trials, but it seems to be a promising treatment for urge urinary incontinence. Another component that I think will be um, to, uh, int of interest to physiotherapists in the next year is to try to better understand the pelvic floor muscle deficits and dysfunction in mixed and urge urinary incontinent patients. And there's a study by Pombriand Relais, which also has been submitted and is accepted with modification in, a in a a NAU, sorry. Um, and the methodology was an observational study, and what um, they did was to compare continent stress and mix and continent women in terms of looking at their morphology, the morphology of the pelvic floor and the function of the pelvic floor. And what they found was that there were morphological and functional deficits that were specific to mixed urinary incontinence. And by better understanding those dysfunction, I think that physiotherapists will be able to better target a treatment towards those with mixed urinary incontinence, not 
giving the same exercise program as to women with stress incontinence. Another important issue is the relationship, to better understand the relationship between mix, uh, urge incontinence, and mobility impairment. There was a wonderful trial done by Xavier Fritel in 2013. It was a large, very large observational cross-sectional study uh, in uh, community-based uh, indwelling uh, uh, women. And the method was to compare, to look at the mobility and balance of continent and incontinent women. And what they found was that balance and gait impairment was significantly and independently associated with urge urinary incontinence. The walking speed, the walking balance, and also um, being able to do four tendon steps um, one after the other. So what is the implication of this? Well, mobility and balance training may be helpful to prevent or to improve urge urinary incontinence. And I think physical therapists are the best place to train um, this function. An example of a trial in which they have um, looked at the impact of doing such training is a trial by Maurice Rowe, and it was published in 2014. It's a longitudinal cohort study, again with a large number of participants, men and women. Uh, the method was to, during one year, involve those senior in a senior center-based physical activity trial. So they were, um, we, they were proposing to them to do walking every week in order to get in better shape. So the result was that improvement in physical performance score was independently associated with lower rate of um, incontinence at one year. Again, clinical implication, the intervention aimed at improving physical performance may help to prevent and to improve uh, incontinence in older uh, people. Another trial, I will um, just mention it. It was a prospective study, this time um, linking the fact to increase walking activity with the reduction of nocturia. So again, something that might be interesting to explore for physiotherapists. And I would like to end this presentation by talking about um, another uh, component that physiotherapists will have to look into in the next years. Uh, there has been a few studies looking at uh, urge urinary incontinence, mixed urinary incontinence, and executive function. Uh, and what was found was that in incontinent women, mainly in urge and in mixed incontinent women, compared to control or stress urinary incontinence women, there was a deficit in executive function and also in divided attention. So executive function and divided attention are related to the ability to do two tasks at the same time and to be able not to disengage from one task when you're doing another one. So let's say you have urgency, you want to contract your pelvic floor and then you have to walk to the bathroom. You need to be able to do both things at the same time. And apparently those women with urge and mixed incontinence have a problem with that. So physiotherapists have, be, have to be aware of that if they're going to be teaching those exercises and if they're going to be training women. And a good example of something that might be the start of such a treatment is a study by Elliot that was published in 2014 in NAU again. Um, it was an observational pilot study with 24 mixed urinary incontinent women. And the intervention was pelvic floor muscle training enhanced by cognitive training through virtual reality rehabilitation. So what it was in this case, it was a game. It's the Dance Dance Revolution game. I don't know if you know about this. So on the screen, there are arrows. And those arrows are pointing where you should put your foot on the mat. So an arrow on the top, you should put your feet on top and then laterally or in the back. 
But also uh, on that screen, there are big dots, red dots, and that shows you that you should contract your pelvic floor. So contracting the pelvic floor while doing a cognitive task. And the result of this pilot study showed that uh, th that training program appeared to be effective in reducing the symptoms of incontinence, improving the strength of the pelvic floor, the gait stability, cognitive performance, and improving adherence to pelvic floor rehabilitation during the treatment because it was uh, something that the participant enjoyed. So, in conclusion, Traditional physical therapy treatment seem to be effective in reducing urge urinary incontinence and mixed urinary incontinence, as well as urgency, frequency, and nocturia. However, more trials are needed because the level of evidence is not there for certain um, treatment yet. There are more studies in women than in men, and results are generally presented immediately after treatment. So there's a need for a long-term follow-up. And finally, to improve the effectiveness of physical therapy treatment, there's a need to better understand the pathophysiology and the mechanism of action of urgency and mixed urinary incontinence. So physiotherapists will be looking at the urgency sensation dimension pelvic floor and mobility dysfunction, and cognitive deficit. And of course, a randomized trial will have to be run. But I think that with um, uh, their, in their field, physical therapists are the best to take on this challenge. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Chantal, for a very elegant overview of a lot of information. Sorry you had to start with the IT problems. <laughs> Thank now, you. Now, I just wondered, I mean, obviously there's a peripheral component with pelvic floor, uh, which you've very clearly demonstrated. You also mentioned, of course, urgency is a sensory mm -hmm. factor in the limbic system, we believe, and base, based on information. And obviously we know in drug studies that placebo has a 20% effect. It's a challenge, but how would you see that one can control for the intervention effect in doing these randomized studies? That's a difficult question. But I mean, that's a cr critical question, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? it is. With the central bit. I mean, you mentioned that it's a central factor, and it is, it is a, it's, it's a big challenge for all of us. But yeah, for all of us, yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from the floor? I must congratulate you. A huge amount of information very clearly presented. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank Appreciate you. it.